So in the previous section, we looked at simple harmonic motion. d2x by dt squared is equal to minus omega squared x squared. Okay, And of course, we can add the omega squared x squared to both sides and rewrite it like this. Now what we're going to do is we're introducing another term into the middle here which is proportional to the velocity of the particle. Okay, So we're going to have still that omega squared x is equal to 0, but we're going to have this term k dx by dt, so the term that is proportional to the velocity in the middle. Now, the effect that that has, we have looked at in the previous video when we were doing our investigative work. And we looked at the auxiliary equation for this. So the auxiliary equation would be um, m squared plus k times m plus omega squared is equal to zero. Now, when you do that, and you consider this quadratic, if you look at the discriminant for this, so the discriminant b squared minus 4ac would be k squared take away 4 times 1 times omega squared. Okay, so this is your discriminant. Now, if that is greater than 0, so if k squared take away 4 omega squared is greater than 0, then the solutions to your second order differential equation would be of the form x is equal to c1 e to the m1t plus c2 e to the m2t. Okay? Now, what you get from that is what's referred to as over damping. Okay? So this situation results in over damping or heavy damping. So quite often, uh, you'll see a curve that looks like this. For example, that's one that we looked at. Um, or, depending on the initial conditions, you might get something that looks like this. OK? But the idea is that... If you don't have this term, then what happens is that you just have simple harmonic motion. And for a pendulum, it just keeps on rocking backwards and forwards. Okay? And it goes on and on like that forever. Or you, the mass attached to the spring, you pull it down and you release it and just keeps on doing that over and over and over again. Okay? Forever and ever and ever. What this term does is it adds in a resistance to that. Okay, so imagine that um, if you um, change the conditions of the room so that uh, you made what it was going through, so the, the fluid that the actual uh, pendulum was going through, so uh, if it's air, you're going to get air resistance, for example. OK, uh, or it could be going through water um, or you could have it going through um, a more viscous fluid um, like treacle. So what happens is that if you increase K, so if you increase K, then the more likely this is to be greater than zero. And what's going to happen is that once you've set your pendulum off, the quicker it's going to get back to just being um, back to its displacement being zero. And in which case, it might not oscillate at all. 
it might be that it just does this. So if, it, if k is very large, then your pendulum could just go and then stop, okay? Or get closer and closer and closer back to where its initial condition needs to be, where x is zero. Okay, and these are the situations that you have for that. I mean, it might kind of go um, back a little bit, but then it'll, it'll come to a stop. So this is your over damping or heavy damping. If, on the other hand, you have your discriminant being equal to zero, then the general solution looks like this. C1 plus C2 T E to the M T. Okay? Now, when you've got that situation, uh, your critical damping, as it's referred to, can look very similar to these situations here. Okay? You could have um, that it does one swing back and then comes to a stop, but so it could look like this, for example. Um, could do something like that, depending on the curve that you have, of course. But the point is that bet the difference between critical damping and heavy damping can be difficult to ascertain. But uh, if you were looking at this in a practical context. But of course, you can figure it out mathematically because the discriminant would be equal to zero. If, on the other hand, you have k squared take away 4 omega squared is negative, this situation um, finds it, well, where k, in this case, um, might be quite small. It doesn't have to be, of course, but the 4 omega squared just needs to be larger than k squared in order for this to occur. The omega you can see as a tightening up of the spring if you've got the spring attached to the mass, um, or loosening the pendulum, okay? And that's what causes this situation to happen. So we get x is equal to e to the um, m1, what shall I have it as? Um, well, if the solution was m1 plus or minus m2i, okay? Then we would have e to the m1, c1, cosine of m2, t, uh, sorry, m1, t, well, there, isn't it? Uh, c1, cosine of m2, t, plus c2, sine of m2, t. And then what you find is that you have this situation where it kind of rocks back and forwards, and it gets slower and slower and slower, but it keeps on rocking back and forwards, okay? So you get this situation visually where it's doing something like this. Okay, where well, it's getting closer and closer and closer to that t-axis. Okay, so it kind of still has that oscillating nature, but it's getting closer and closer and closer to the t-axis as uh, the resistance force um, slows it down, essentially. So that is, just so I've got it, so that's uh, under damping or light damping. Okay, so these are the three situations that we can come across, and it's all down to the discriminant of your auxiliary equation.